So I couldn't get the camera this week and there was something wrong with my guts. It's funny, any time you pick up some kind of bug, you think to yourself, do I have the coronavirus, don't you? I don't know, does anybody else get that or am I just a, a paranoid maniac? Today's video, I think it'll, it'll be entitled How My Brain Does or Doesn't Work and some stuff that I've learned myself since I started doing the build. It's not related to learning from college or universities. So every panel, every repair panel on the side of the van has now been test fitted and lined up. Major thumbs up. To get this stuff on, I'll jump inside and show you what's, what's in the worst. Did the check fit. Cleaning the fuel arches, right. This, there's an analogy with that door skin. Remember I said, because it chopped so much out, I had to do the door skin before I wanted to. My theory was do all the metal work along the bottom. Now, as it turns out, this, this theory is getting expanded on a little bit. As you do this stuff, what the faults appear in other places where... If I put this panel on just now, I'm not going to be able to get behind that to repair it. I've got an, an amazing opportunity to do the last little bits and pieces of the tidying up. Behind that panel, there is no rust. It's all been treated with uh, my homemade seam sealer, seam sealer paint and pour 15, which I've used along here and on the inside of the arches as well. I can't make a decision in POR 15 because I've just started using it. Uh, so we did check fit. That's a metaphor for how one job leads into another. So clean and a few arches, right? To get this panel on and this panel on, it means going in behind these areas, wire brushing them, getting them clean, clean so that I can spot weld through the back to hold the panels on both sides. That's led on to another job. Let's go inside the back of the van. I've even got my prop ready for me. There's dirt, gunk and crap down inside of the back of the wheel arch. Before I put either of the panels on, I'm now going to use my extended wire brush on a screwdriver. Some solvent, it doesn't have to be Sometimes substitute. I think petrol is probably the best stuff to use. It's the cheapest. There's dangers come with it as well. I mean, nothing about this is dangerous. So be clever, be grown up. Before I can put these two external panels on, I need to get in behind that, clean it, and get all the seams sealed down in there. Why is that? Because when the panels go on, I'm not going to be able to do that. So this is me. Fortunately, it's moving on to a different set, a different work set, a, 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 a different part of the build. But Again, I thought maybe rattling on the outside panels after I did the prep work would have been a straightforward enough job. However, it's now turned into I need to do something else before I can do that because we've got great access to the stuff I need to repair. This was a piece of... There was some corrosion building up in that now. The one we did over here. I've absolutely covered the inside of the repair and seam sealer and the outside of the repair as we know that's where the sky roof is has got the fiberglass on it so <sighs> I would imagine the biggest nightmare on the planet would be put in foam insulation in a false roof and this type of stuff leaks so I'm going to give it a couple of days to set up give it a rub down put seam sealer over the top of that and do the seam sealer on the other side of the roof if need be maybe use some roof and flash in Scotland is not a dry country the weather have been fantastic recently, but I'm not taking a, a, a chance of everything getting wet. That would be my worst nightmare. So, putting these panels on has now given me another job where I need to clean all around the back of the wheel arches. The inside of the wheel arches, get all the gunk, crap, and it's a 20-year-old van, so there's all sorts of horribleness built in there. With these panels off, I can clean the back of all that stuff. It should run down in the inside of the panel and then I can seam seal where we were two seconds ago and behind that again. 
that'll give us a good job. Now the next issue we've got is when I put these panels on, I need to weld them, grind them, seam seal them and get paint on them and stuff. Hopefully I can do that from the inside. If I can't, I'll cut out pieces of the internal frame so that I can get my paintbrushes and stuff down there. So that's that one there. Sometimes you have to work till it's done. This thing I keep on going on about, the galvanised steel. If I put this back section on it, and I think this is why I'm filming as I've come into the workshop tonight and not as I'm leaving and showing you the end result. When I start tacking this all up, the welding isn't the only job you have to do. You need to grind it. You need to get fiberglass along anywhere that you've welded. Seam seal down the inside the right edge. Seam seal along the inside. Seam seal down here. Then get back into the van and get down the sections of the panel. They haven't been corrosion protected. You get prote protection in. So that's one job that needs to be done from start to finish. Under no circumstances leave your project lying about for even three or four days exposed to the elements, you know. Again, if you live in Nevada, if you're a Maasai Mari warrior or a guy from Saudi Arabia, don't take that advice. If you live from further north than Birmingham, take that advice. When you start that job, take that job to completion. When I say completion, completion would be body filling, priming and all the rest of it. There's primer on it. If there's fiberglass protecting the weld, and seems to be on the other side of the weld, I don't have to worry or think about that. That is the corrosion protection. So sometimes when you're doing it, one job will lead on to another job. It's good that we're moving away from underneath the van. That's just fantastic. However, I've got an amazing opportunity, so tonight's job will probably, probably be clean the inside of that where you've seen the wire brushes and stuff like that. Then I can just wipe down any excess that runs down the inside of the panel with a rag. So I've got, I've got to check fit, clean inner wheel arches and I've done that one. Open behind cells, rockers, we'll do that thing. Shoot wax oil onto the frame. Any areas that have been exposed that I've seen, I've, I've cleaned up, used uh, my, my, my go-to stuff is oven cleaner. I was talking to Gary about that a while ago, was just forgetting grease and grime and crap off of stuff, it's absolutely perfect. So any chassis members or legs that I... I've opened up inside the van, that, that panel's on, there's one that sits about here. I'm going to spray my wax oil in there. Now the next thing with the uh, seam seals and wax oils and all the rest of the petrochemical. If you weld just after you've used these things, you're going to set your project on fire. So give them a few days to set off and try to keep the corrosion protection away from the areas you're going to be welding. Right? So one job depends and leads to another job, we've done that one. I, I, I've given up deadlines. This is my own van. Why, after all that work, and it has been some amount of work, would I kid myself on and hide a little piece of rust somewhere? Before I start welding that panel on, if there's anything else that I've missed, and I don't think there is, I think I've done a real good job in there. I'll take these back. I can't, I've not got a GoPro, so I can't show you me putting that panel on, but I'll show you maybe tomorrow or Sunday when I have got that one on, we'll pop this back off. And I'll show you the job that I've done in this. I'm, I'm really, really, really proud of myself. Any corrosion that was there has absolutely been taken away and I've put way more protection on them than it came out of the factory 20 odd years ago. So what was that one? I've given up dead ones. Why take it to that point, which is an amazing point, and go, and I, here's a great Scottish term for you, why fanny it up now? Why cut a corner? If it takes another hour or two hours to build a little patch on there, if it takes another day, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to end up with at the end of it is a structurally really, really sound old van. So I think we've missed one. Shoot wax, what, shoot wax oil on the frame. One job was another. I, I've given up deadlines, okay. Sometimes you have to work until the job's done. We covered that. When you put that on, it's not just the welding. It's the grinding. It's the fiberglassing. It's the corrosion protection. Do not go home until every piece of exposed metal is cleaned up. With a caveat again, if you live in the desert, don't worry about that one. And I think the last one, open behind cells. Right, let's have a look at this. So I've test fitted this panel here. Right? Now, I think the unique selling point with my build is how heavily I'm going to corrosion protect it. So that's all been seam sealed up. The issue is, once you weld, it's going to be tacked along here. 
Right, bang, 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 bang. Then it'll be tacked along here, which will marry up to the top edge. I've still got to put a bend down here and the bottom edge. How do I then get on the back side of this piece of galvanised steel to put the wire brush in to clean the welds up and cover it with the seam seal and stuff? Well, you see what I did here? I opened the two sections up so I could get a paintbrush in the back of them. Now again, that's pour 15, you can see it up there, seam sealer, there's seam sealer up inside these gaps and all the rest of that. It could rust, I may be making a big mistake doing all this. However, as I've stripped down the van, the areas where the seam sealer has stuck, which has general uh, uh, underneath it, no corrosion skin. So there we go. Before I put that panel there on, I need to think of ways of opening this up from the back. So that once I've did all the welding, I can get a wire brush in there, clean it up, get some solvent in, and then do corrosion protection from the back. So I think I'm going to have to cut some metal panels out of that, make some more of these little sections that can bolt on and bolt off, then get in and do my corrosion protection from the back. This is stuff I've worked out for myself. Is it a good way of doing it? I don't know. The amount of work that was involved in getting the base metal work back in the van has been insane. You've seen that, you know. I've been playing with the thing on and off. Look at that camera, man. Oh, for goodness sake. I've been playing with the thing on and off for 14 months. I reckon I've got three or four months worth of eight or ten hour days in the repairing this. Why would I go to all this level? So that maybe a year, six, six months, a year, two, three years down the line... I'm going to have to do it all again. It just doesn't make any sense at all. However, there's the other, there's a nihilist inside me that says I could drive the thing to the end of the street to take it for its uh, MOT test and the bus, a bus could run into the side of it. So there's that as well. However, I don't think you achieve much if you're all... It's good to have a bit of paranoia, isn't it? It's good to think about bad things that could happen. How, how could I try to avoid this van getting damaged? Make sure the brakes are working fine on it, you know, keep it in good state of repair and stuff like that. However, again, why would I do this amount of work and leave the back of that exposed? I know from stripping the thing, even if it's galvanised steel, give that three or four months, six months a year, it'll start rusting, then it'll start bubbling through, then somebody, me maybe, would be faced with doing this job again. So, forget the deadlines, or I have forgot the deadlines. What I'm trying to do now is put something back together. That's going to last for a long time. It was a lot of work. I want the reward out of it. It's a dream of going places and doing stuff in this, right? So, the last thing I'll discuss is, for this panel, when I started out over the other side, I would have tried to get the two of these within a millimetre of each other, and... Did a butt weld between the two different pieces of metal. It would have been real, real difficult. It taken a lot of time. I could do it. Don't get me wrong, it's just spending a lot of time with a, a metal file and cleaning the steel up. It's not, it's labour intensive. As I've said many times before, these things aren't difficult. They're not easy. They just take a bit of time and work. So instead of doing that, what I've done is, oh, well, back in the back of the van again. You can see it down here. I've added maybe, what's that, a three or a four mil, an inch, inch and a half strip of steel between the old body panel that you want to, want to stick on. So what's my think, thinking with that? It'll give the van a bit of extra strength at the side and it's going to make the job a bit easier. I think that'll make the job a bit easier. I weld the new piece of steel onto the existing body frame. Then I go outside and weld the new panel onto the bit of steel that I just put on which is there, and I just have to put a little uh, piece of fibreglass along that. <sighs> Don't do this. That's supposed to make my life a bit easier and speed things up. There's been nothing about this that's been fast, you know. That's a, an idea to come up with myself. Does it work? Does it not work? I don't know. How would a, a not a body place to it? Well, I've got these tools over here as well. It's a joggler and a whole bunch of a little L shape onto the steel. So I could have 
put a nail shape in. I think I did that with the side door pan. Joggled all along it and then welded onto the, 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 the lower bit of metal. I'm not doing it. I'm just going to put a strip in there. The other benefit, I think, of doing that, come on camera, for goodness sake, is it's going to give these panels a little bit more structural rigidity. So it should take maybe a bit of the noise out the van. And it'll make it a little bit stronger. It doesn't need strength up there anyway, you know, but it may be a bonus. And I've did the same thing here. There's a piece of steel behind these two panels to overlap. Alright, so this is how my brain does or doesn't work. If we hit a benchmark with getting the internal steel done, it was over a week ago, we've now hit another benchmark in that the panels are on. They're kind of lined up. It's a bit more work, but as I said, I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Do it properly. Okay? So, I hope this was of interest to somebody. Anybody that's been following the series for such a long time is going to know exactly where we're fit now. Everything ready to get buttoned up and all the, the groundwork has been done on everything. And I don't recommend, recommend buying one of these phones. They're absolute gack. Okay. Thanks for watching. Today's riveting episode of the old Zambo TV. See you all later. Bye.